found that very interesting that Telegram couldn't do it, but Kin did get away with something. And then there's also the idea of Facebook having the Libra. If you liked this video, click below. And if you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe and then remember to click the little bell icon so you get notifications. Enormous uh, concentration of power. Democracy, poverty reduction, and cryptocurrency. Are you sophisticated enough to um, invest in uh, securities? Bitcoin is actually a reversion to commodity money. Decentralized social networking. We recently had three major attempts by three or four companies to introduce massive cryptocurrencies, and they were mostly kneecapped by the SEC when it came to the United States. One was Telegram. You know, they had sold, to, people clearly had a million dollars because that was the minimum amount. So clearly anyone who invested had that million dollars to invest. Uh, they did it under Reg D. They filed Reg D, I believe. Um, and when they were about to release it as a currency, somehow the SEC came in and said, yeah, you did Reg D, but we won't allow these secondary sales to happen. Um, and I was never quite sure why exactly what the argument of the SEC was. I mean, if they had done everything, people waited for a year and so forth, wouldn't the secondary ones be allowed? And the only thing I could think of is the argument that I saw was in the courts is that it was being treated as a currency, but there was nothing to buy uh, yet with it. Yeah, I, I, I don't have enough details on what the, uh, you know, what the SEC's position was with respect to, uh, to Telegram. I mean, that the, um, you know, the gating issue clearly was that they thought that they thought that these were securities, but beyond that, I don't know. Right. And that, I guess my point was that even if they were securities, it would seem that they should be able to be uh, un, uh, what is it? remove the legend and they become unburdened, or, Unres un unrestricted, unrestricted. Um, yeah, I'm just don't don't have enough details on that one. That's one. Another happened with Kink, Kink Messenger. I happen to know the people, the unions, uh -huh. ventures here in New York, and I saw Fred Wilson talking about this in person. He was so pissed, say you know that uh, the regulators, uh, you know, because they invested in Kick Messenger. Yeah. And the Kick Messenger was a messenger, and then they released Kin, their you know their token. And I interviewed some people, uh, you know, on panels on Kin and so on. They moved off of uh, Ethereum because it's too slow, too expensive per transaction. So that's one thing. They moved to Solana, which they did like recently, like now. Um, but uh, they raised seven hundred million dollars. So Telegram raised two billion. They raised seven hundred million. They have that money. But then the SEC kind of tied up, gummed up the works. And they almost had to like give up their messenger, right? And, and focus on um, the currency until somebody saved the messenger. It came in, whatever. I forgot how it, uh, I didn't follow it exactly. But the messenger is there and the kin currency is, uh, they're, they're working on it. And the SEC, I was surprised, let them go and got, gave them a fine and said, now you can trade on exchanges. Yes, uh, you recognize this or that. There was a settlement of some kind. Yeah. So I found that very interesting that Telegram couldn't do it, but Kin did get away with something. And then there's also the idea of Facebook having the Libra, which was, I think, less of the SEC rules and more of the monetary and the, uh, the Congress saying, oh, we're going to have an even more massive uh, mon uh, monetary uh, system that is now not subject to any individual country and that's scary money being issued by on that level and even because yeah. i'm a left libertarian i'm not really like so much uh only capitalist i'm saying yeah even though mark zuckerberg built it and so on but at the end of the day i distrust large corporations just as much as i distrust large uh, states or governments mm -hmm. in some ways so here we're in the states distrust the, the large corporations saying you're going to have your own money you know, and you can issue it and whatever. So they're worried about losing control of their monetary system. Um, I feel like there's, I, I don't want to really get into that too much because we're talking about the securities laws, but I just want to say, it seems like the public interest is represented currently by states and governments. And suddenly this money creation happens. It normally happens by banks, which are regulated. 
but the underwriters at the banks make the decision of who gets a loan and who doesn't get the loan. And so 95% of our money supply comes from banks, essentially issuing this money, private banks, even though they may be publicly traded, but there is pri there private decisions about who to underwrite and who not to underwrite. And sometimes on this show, I talk about the UBI and you know other ways to get money in the hands of the people, which I think are the future. It would be interesting to get, um, to move away, to have an alternative to private bank underwriters and to really just give the money to the people so they decide, not in the future, but now, what they need to buy. So they need to buy food, they need to buy a phone, they go and buy it, and then the businesses wind up with that money. It's a different way of, of, of getting the money to the people. But I'm sort of, you know, giving my perspective here. I'm basically yeah. saying there's innovations about how value is being created and how currencies are being distributed. And we need those because if we don't have that, uh, like with Intercoin, you know, community currencies, we're going to live in a world where Amazon has a giant currency, let's say, but also China, uh, Central Bank of China is gonna have the digital yuan and the digital dollar. And that's going to be more centralized than the current system because now instead of the banks issuing the digital yuan, it would be the central bank of the United States. Yeah. And so that's a bit of a, even for people who are not libertarian, they might think, well, every, it's gonna know everyone's account balance and it's gonna be able to have a social credit system and take away your ability to pay for things if you don't behave well enough. And you know, there may be some issues there. Do you have any uh, just feelings about uh, where, what the future holds and where do you think, uh, Outside of the SEC, what do you think of this whole space that you're in now, uh, innovating in, in this uh, in this manner? Basically? Yeah, it was, it, it's interesting because you, you've raised you know several issues there, and one of them is you know who is the determinant of the public interest. You know, if the, if the government thinks this is not good for you to have, um, are they do they get away with it basically, or do we create something else that goes around? Um, and you know where where it goes uh, in the future. I mean, who the hell knows? Nobody can ever predict anything. We should have had flying cars. Where's my flying car? We should have had one by now. On the other hand, I have in my pocket, you know, um, enough computing power to launch space stations. Um, didn't predict that. Um, so it, it's it, yeah, predicting the future is hard. Um, <laughs> yeah. as, as Yogi Berra said, um, yeah, uh, who way knows? To predict the future is to invent it. I forgot who said well, that. That's yeah, that, that's, a, that's a much better uh, way of summarizing where we're going. Um, yeah, who, who the heck knows? The one thing that we can guarantee is, you know, in the examples you used, um, the SEC is always, you know, trying to catch up. And, and that's always going to be the case. The regulators are always going to you know, be behind where current innovation is and trying to cope with the problems that were caused here when there are new problems rising here. All right. So last thing, and I think this one is a very important thing uh, because it has to do with the SEC regulating something and almost taking it away from the turf of another agency, which is FinCEN. Uh, and, and you know, I, I wanted to sort of set the stage for this. So we have attempts at a UBI regularly in the United States and other countries, but here in the United States, I'll just go through them quickly because it's important for viewers to know. So the one that was ultimately the only one that was successful and took hold was in Alaska. Um, Alaska taxes the oil revenues and the fossil fuels that are mined there. And at the point of extraction, they then redistribute all that money to the residents of Alaska, uh, the citizens, and they get something like $2,000 a year. Uh, Alaska happens to have the, the most, um, the highest Gini coefficient, or I should say the lowest inequality yeah. of all 50 states every year after year. Alaska and Utah typically tied. Uh, it's very interesting given the fact that it's so rural and there's many people that are not well off there. But at the end of the day, the inequality may, the low inequality may be attributed to the fact that everyone has a floor of $2,000. That's Alaska. But then we have uh, attempts uh, like the mayor of Stockton, California, tried to do a UBI. Andrew Yang ran president, right, on the platform of doing a UBI. He didn't win. 
Uh, but N Richard Nixon decades ago tried to do something like a UBI. Uh, and there was also in 2010, I think, I forgot what it was called, somebody uh, reminded me, uh, there was a direct payments to people. Uh, that could have been a UBI. But here's the thing. I don't think a UBI is very easily done on a federal level. I'm surprised it's done even on a state level with Alaska. I think the UBI can be much more easily done on a local level, um, meaning a local currency and you give it out to people and it circulates locally. The thing is nobody seems to have caught on to this and I'm glad in the sense that Intercoin seems to be the one that's gonna do it. Um, City coins, you know, a uh, coin that circulates in the local area and can be used to pay local taxes, local buses and infrastructure and all that kinds of things. So there's certainly going to be demand for it. And if there's demand for it, the private piano teachers will start accepting it and so on. So we have all these ideas. Right now, Andrew Yang, same Andrew Yang, ran for president, is now running for mayor of New York City. Um, and he speaks about doing a UBI. That UBI will come out to about $5 a day for people. It's not nothing and it will definitely help. It's, I think it's the $2,000 per, uh, per person per year. Mm -hmm. But how can a city afford it, especially after all this? I think if there was a New York coin, okay, if there, for example, New York City coin, uh, people would, and it could be used for museums, it could be used for buses, etc. then the government would have unlimited amounts that it can um, issue. And I would argue that there should be a democratic process of knowing what the inflation rate is in that coin, how much should be issued. All these kinds of innovations, the local consumer price index, the, the coin itself and so on are overseen not just by the SEC, but also by New York City, New York State and also the um, FinCEN, okay? So here's where, what my point is. There's something called a money transmitter business, an MSB. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also um, and I'm going to have people on the show who deal with FinCEN, you know, and money transmission laws. But it seems to me that um, they're more concerned about how, first of all, there has to be a surety bond if you're a money transmission business. And uh, typically a state requires this so that you don't suddenly say, whoops, there's no money to pay out. You know, where's the money go? I don't know where the money went um, with the blockchain. It becomes, again, like sort of like you don't have to regulate a specific business because the, the blockchain is the one that you can see everything on. But the other thing is um, the definition of money transmission business has exemptions too. And FinCEN put out a guidance in 2013, another one in 2019, which was I think the most recent one. And it affirms some of these, one of these exemptions, but two of them are important. One is the integral exemption, which says that if you are, say task rabbit or one of these things where a service was done a uh, tutor came to your house or whatever and they are simply paying out the tutor and so the service was integral to the transaction you're not a money transmitter because you're not just taking money in and giving money out but rather someone's doing a service and you're just making sure they get paid so that's the kind of thing that uh, stripe you know uh, deals with a lot and they have the licenses or all these things but now with the blockchain, we're going to have to solve this. So the other exemption, and the one I want to ask you is the SEC exemption. So if you happen to be dealing with a security, in this case, you almost want to be dealing with a security or something that the SEC would regulate as a security, because then the exemption is FinCEN says, well, we're going to let the SEC deal with this the same way they deal with uh, NASDAQ, uh, Yahoo shares or whatever. We're not going to think that Yahoo shares are a form of currency that's convertible to real currency. Um, and so maybe in that way, having a security is almost like uh, not having to, to be overseen by the uh, FinCEN. So I just wanted to get your thoughts. I know that you don't really deal so much with that uh, side of things with the money transmission laws, but I just wanted to ask, what have you seen uh, from your side uh, with this exemption, have you ever seen it uh, in practice or used or anything? If something's overseen by the SEC, FinCEN says, okay, SEC, you can you can be the one overseeing yeah. it. Yeah, we, we generally don't get involved at, at that level because usually, you know, people come to us once they've already decided we will be a security. But I think in a couple of cases, at least, 
the um, you know they do the fact you know, that the, the um, a balancing analysis to say um, this is the pros and cons of being a security and you know what we might rather be a security than have to deal with all of this stuff um, and so that's the point at which we get them there's, a, there's at least a couple of uh, transactions we've done where I think that definitely uh, entered into the, the analysis. So you feel if people actually say this is a security and we welcome the SEC to oversee us then you haven't really seen FinCEN muscle in and say, wait, wait, it's also a, an asset that can function as a convertible currency, a CVC or whatever. We, we, have, we haven't come across that. I mean, you know, once in, in general, once everybody's decided that something's a security, I think it, they, they acknowledge that the burden of being regulated as a security is quite enough work for anyone. I have not seen any tension between the agencies in that way. Excellent. And nothing from the commodities or anything like that, right? I, I think that those that the SEC slash CFTC battles happened long ago. And of course, the new chairman is the former chairman of the CFTC. I've always thought those two should just get merged. It's stupid having two different agencies, but it's just my opinion. Excellent. Well, I'd love to hear next time about the drama of US agencies, but <laughs> uh, I think this would be a great uh, place to end it. If you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe and then remember to click the little bell icon so you get notifications. Wintercoin, making crypto mainstream.